Well, welcome back, my fellow learners. This is section nine of our series on learning the Dart programming language. We're going to cover command line utilities today. We're going to talk about reading from and writing to files. Let's jump right in. To run a command line application from Dart, you need the Dart VM. That comes with the SDK install. So if you didn't install that, you'll have to do that now if you're interested in using command line utilities. To get command line help once you do that, from the command line, dart space dash dash help. Here we'll create our first program that will execute from the command line. It really is no difference in this particular case from running it through VS Code like we have been for the whole of the classes we've gone through. You create your module, so we have one here. We simply have a main function, and then inside its body, we have a print statement. We ensure that we're in the same directory where the file you want to run is, and then we execute it simply by saying dart and then the full file name. Now, if it's not in the same directory, that's fine too. You just have to put the full path to the file relative to the directory that you're in where you're executing the code. But in our particular case, we have a file called command underscore line dot dart. So we execute it by placing the dart keyword before it, dart command underscore line dot dart. And when we do that, the very next line that gets shown to us at the command line is the string that is in the body of our print statement. Okay, so what are the exact steps that we should take to create a command line application? Okay, here we go, everything from the command line. And note, we're gonna be using the args package later in this training module. It's a Dart library that we must configure to use as we have done here. So, number one, create a directory called CMD app, command app. We do this at the command line, make dir, command app, just as you see it. Then cd, or change directory, into the cmd app directory. So cd, cmd, app. Create a file named cmdapp.dart. You can do this from the command line by doing touch cmdapp.dart. Then we can create our pubspec yaml file from the command line, touch pubspec.yaml. And inside of the pubspec.yaml, we can enter the following code that I have here. Make sure you do it exactly as I do it here with all the indentations. Make sure that all those indentations are the same. And then still from within our CMD app directory, we can run a pub get. This resolves all our dependencies. So a lot of the times when you're creating a command line application, you're passing in values at the command line. And that's what we're gonna show you here. On the left-hand side, we have the code. On the right-hand side, we have the syntax I'm using to execute the code at the command line and the resultant output. So I have void main, and then inside of main, I have a list using generics type string, and I'm calling it args. So the dart main function, we haven't covered this yet, takes an optional argument list, list, string, and I'm calling it args, to get arguments from the command line. So in the body of main, I have print, my arguments passed in r colon, and then a for in loop, for string a, a is my variable, in args print a. So when I do this, when I execute dart command app dot dart, I pass in a few arguments, one, two, and three, and then those arguments, by virtue of the fact that the main function expects a list, are printed out via my for loop. My arguments passed in are one, two, three. Exactly what I typed at the command line as arguments after the name of my file. So can you pass in a different data type other than string to the main function? Well, I've tried this, and the answer I get is no. If you find out something different, leave comments for us all so you can correct my thinking. But here I have on the left hand side the code void main. I just put in arg as a parameter. Then I print arg and I print the arg runtime type. And you see on the right hand side when I execute it comes out to be a list string. So even when I just use arg in main, it still is of type string. Let me know if you find out anything different. We can also pass in key value pairs at the command line. If you look at this code here, we have our main function with our list called args. 
and then we have a for in loop for string arg in args. And then in there, we create a second list called foo, and we split the key value pairs on the colon. Dart's looking for the colon, so it'll fail if you use any other character, so make sure you use the colon. And then to print this out, we can set two more variables, key, which equals the first data element for foo, which will be the key, and value equals foo1, so the element in the sec second position would be the value. And then we print it out using string interpolation, and we get what you see up here. So for the first time here, I'll expose you to the args package. The args package is a Dart library that we must configure to use. It parses raw command line arguments into a set of options and values. So let's look at the command we use first, dart, command app, dot dart, and the same key value pairs we used in the previous example. So let's look at the code on the left-hand side. First of all, to use the args program, we must import it, package, colon, args, args.dart. So it's a little different than using the internal packages, like the math package, for instance. Then we have our main function, and we pass in our list called args. The first thing we do is create a parser, so an instance of a parser. Now you know what this is. This is an instance because, ar because arg parser is a class, so this creates an instance of the argument parser. Then we have parser.add flag verbose defaults to true. So using the add flag method to define options. Here we also use the defaults to parameter. This defaults to being true. Then we create a variable called results. That equals parser.parse and we pass it the arguments. You parse by calling the parse method and passing it arguments. So the first thing we try to print out is do we have verbose? And when it prints out up here, it's true. Then we have a new list called foo equals results dot arguments. Arguments property shows the list of arguments passed in at the command line. So we would expect this to, pr to print out our key value pairs, and indeed it does. That's the second line here. And then we have a second list, and we can print out the rest of the arguments, the remaining command line arguments that were not passed in as options or flags. It just gives us the same list in this case. Now can we use Dart to get system info from our system? Sure we can. So we have a main function. Here we're going to print out environment variables for the current user. So I create a final called environment variable map platform.environment. I create another variable called URI platform.script. I print the URI and I get the script full path to the script. I print password equals, and then I print that out. Of course, I'm kind of covering that so you can't see it. I print out the login name. I'm covering that as well. Um, the path, the full environment path, that would be here, but I took that out as well. I can get operating system info, so string OS equals platform.operating system, so I print that out, and that prints Mac OS, correct, correct. Or I can use a, a predicate getter to do the same. So if platform dot is Mac OS, I can print is Mac, else is not a Mac, it is a Mac. So there's lots of things you can do. This is just but scratching the surface. Here we can read and write to the command line. So we've seen some of this before. We have a main function. We have a standard out dot write line. So type something, that's going to get printed to the command line. And if you see here when I execute this code, it does. It says type something, the string that I put inside that method. And then string input equals standard in read line sync. So it's going to read what I type at the command line. And in blue is what I'm typing at the command line. Then we do another standard out read line. You typed, and then through string interpolation, capture what the user printed to the command line. And it does indeed. Hi there, Dart folks, gets printed right here. So here we're going to actually read from a file. So for this exercise, I had already created a file called foo.txt that I reference right here in the code. And also, to make this work, you must have the Dart IO imported as I have it here, import Dart IO down in this message right there. This allows us to read and write to the terminal and the command line. So you need it for this one and the previous example. So let's look at our code. We have our main function, new file called foo.txt, dot read as string method 
to then string contents. So I pass to this then method a new string called contents, and then I print the contents. So it's actually printing the contents of the file as it reads it. And out here, output here, dart command app dot dart, you'll see exactly what I have in this little food.txt. One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, four to go. We read from a file, now we're going to write to a file. In fact, we're going to write to a file and then we're going to read it back. So I have a final called file name equals my new dot text. So I'm going to create this new file. New file, pass it in the file name, my new dot text. What string am I going to write? Simple string. I'm writing some content. I'm, ex I'm escaping the apostrophe before the M. Otherwise, Dart would think that this was the end. I'm using the then method again to write the file. Then I will print it back out to the command line. So new file, exactly what I did before. New file read as string, then string contents, and print those contents. And that's what gets printed, exactly what I wrote into the file. My fine friends, thank you for making it all the way to the end. I hope you found this valuable. If you did, do a couple of things. Subscribe to the page, give me a like, leave a comment, and share this with somebody who might need it. We're trying to start a revolution here.